Will Alex Garland's civil war win your dollar this weekend, or will you end up waving a white flag and staying home for something else? A new See It or Skip It starts right now. See it, we're skipping. See it, we're skipping. See it, we're skipping. Welcome to another episode of Cedar Skip It, where we're going to first be talking about one of the biggest films that's going to be coming out that's starting the summer movie season a little bit early, and that is Civil War. This is directed by Alex Garland. You might know him from such sci-fi films as Ex Machina, Annihilation, recently with the horror film Men. This is following a team of military embedded journalists as they race against time to reach DC before rebel factions descend upon the White House. They have one last opportunity to get an interview with this president, who's played by Nick Offerman, which, I mean, come on, Ron Swanson and his president, who wouldn't love that? Well, apparently half the country. And Kirsten Dunst plays our lead photojournalist who is kind of famous in this war for her still photography. She's followed along by somebody that's been basically a, a huge fan of hers from the beginning, a young photojournalist that wants to basically be embattled into the, into the war with her. You might worry that this film is going to get a little bit too muddy into the political stuff, into exactly why each faction is fighting, why Texas and California are together on the Western Front, which is, it's a crazy idea to begin with. But what Alex Garland does that I feel is very clever is not necessarily focus on the how, but where they are currently. This is a visceral, uncompromising vision and a look at the horrors of what a war could actually be like in America. What I immediately caught with this movie is how immersed you become with the story, with the, following this journey with these photojournalists. It's insane. And the way they depict journalists in this movie, how they, how they kind of put the weight on the story to be through photojournalism and the importance of that during a time of war. They're the record keepers. They're the ones that are making sure that people are held accountable and that you're getting a real look inside of what that war is. It's crazy to watch this and have that perspective done so well. And Kirsten Dunst does an incredible job of that. She really holds this whole film together. Plain and simple, this is a warning for the US, not necessarily of political factions. Like I said, there really is nothing as far as uh, red, white, donkey, elephant. It's you versus the other. And you don't know whether you're the other or us. And it's crazy that they're able to do that in a way that really works with anybody that could watch it. I don't think it polarizes anybody from going to see this movie, regardless of your political beliefs, but it really shows how horrific it could be if a war like this were to start on American soil. The cinematography is beautifully shot by cinematographer Rob Hardy. He does such a good job of showing, kind of like The Walking Dead, how quickly anything can just crumble in a society when you just start not trusting each other. There's some cities that are exactly the way it was because they don't want to get involved in the war. There's some that are completely dystopian looking. Both of those sides and how they're able to show that visually is beautiful, but also horrifying. There's a standout scene stealer of a villain in Jesse Plemons who really is just one of the most terrifying characters I've seen this year, and he's only on screen for maybe about 10 minutes. The sound design and sound mixing is completely immersive. The, the gunshots, how you feel like you're on the front line with these combatants, it's completely immersive. This might be my favorite film of Alex Garland's. It might be a toss up between this and Ex Machina. I'm definitely gonna have to give it a rewatch to say that for sure. But this is a film that I think everybody should go see, but just because it's an excellent film with great characters, great sound design, and great visuals. So that's why I'm giving Civil War, I see it. And next up, we have Invincible Season 2. If you haven't seen Season 1, I strongly advise that you go and check that out. It's on Prime Video right now. You can watch both seasons. They're both fully available. And I have to say that these are some of the best animated stories to come out for comic book television in a very long time. It's an animated series that's based on the Skybound Image comic about a teenager whose father is the most powerful superhero on the planet. The son starts developing powers but uncovers a dark secret about his father and maybe the plans he has for the world if Superman maybe was sent down to Earth to take it over. Much like the first season, this has great story and great performances by the voice cast. Steven Yeun is starring again. We have J.K. Simmons who's playing Omni-Man. Sandra Oh has a really good performance playing his mother. Really everybody in this is firing on all cylinders. Lakeith Stanfield plays the main villain in this, which if they were smart in the Marvel universe right now, I would start calling Lakeith immediately 
to see if maybe he could be Kang in the future Kang Dynasty film. It's great animation, it's great story, the fighting is disgustingly bloody, you see some really horrifying stuff. This is definitely mature and not for kids. This is an adult animation that I feel like if anybody's going in looking for maybe the boys level of violence, you're gonna get that and more. It takes storylines from season one and builds on them and makes them even better. There's teases that were set up in season one that are put to the forefront in season two that are executed really well. Even the side characters have their own moments in this season. The only thing that I wish were different, and this is for people that were watching along as this was coming, is they split season two in half and did not release the second half of the season for a few months after. And I honestly forgot about the show. If you're gonna be working on a season, you have to make sure to pull out the entire thing. If you're doing one that you're just gonna binge watch the entire season, that's one thing. If you're doing weekly episodics, but to split it in half and wait to release that second part really took away momentum and it, it was to its detriment. So hopefully in season three, they don't do that. I also think in my opinion, these episodes are a little bit too long. Instead of a 45 minute runtime each episode, maybe we could have dropped it down to 35 and had more impact and wait to what was going on, definitely check out Invincible Season 2 and check out Season 1 as well. And just a side note, Kirby Enthusiasm just wrapped up its entire series and just thank you, Larry David, for giving us some of the best comedy in television ever. For the past few a couple decades, it has been a bedrock for comedy and really brought in so many great stars. Larry David is hilarious and he did such a great job with the ending of this. Perfect way to wrap up the show. Thank you, make sure that you check that one out too. And next up we have Sasquatch Sunset. This actually debuted at Sundance. It stars Jesse Eisenberg. He's a part of a family of Sasquatches, possibly the last of their kind, who's embarking on an absurdist, epic, sometimes funny, and ultimately a bit of a poignant story over the course of one year. This is about a family learning to adapt to change, how the world is changing around them and how they react to that. And really no dialogue is spoken through the entire movie. What I can say the positives are is that the costume and the makeup design in this is really incredible. There's really great shots of the sweeping landscape, cinematography is on point, and some of the moments between the family are actually heartfelt and there's some humorous points to the film. But honestly, it is way too experimental and it just ended up not being my vibe. It feels like an SNL sketch that's gone on way too long that no one has told to rap. While there's some funny moments, all of it is toilet humor, much like even the Minions, and that's not something I, I could recommend to children, let alone adults wanting to watch a movie like this. And overall, it's just not something that I would recommend anybody check out. Maybe it's something that you might like for the experimental reasons for it, but for me, it's absolutely a skip it. And last but not least, we have Sting. Do you like spiders? Well, you might not after watching this movie. This is a horror film surrounding a young girl who finds a spider as a pet, but as she's delving into the lie and hiding from her family that she has this pet, that lie is growing and growing in the form of the spider and might be taking out apartment dwellers and neighbors as they're uncovering what's actually happening in this tiny room that she's in. The story's told really well. I get the family dynamics. I think they're all relatable. The characters are fairly well acted by all of the actors. There's well done suspense. There's pretty good gruesome points to the movie. If you have arachnophobia and you do love horror films, this is one that you should definitely check out. Some of the more convenient stuff that might be a little too cheesy or that you've seen before come from the family plot. You see a lot of this in, a, in many of the horror stories where there's a divide between the daughter and the father and the, there's a divide between the family in some way that causes this monster to grow and become out of hand. But it's still a movie that I would recommend. So if you were gonna go see anything this week, first check out Civil War. But if you don't like that, I'd recommend Sting. That's it for this episode of Cedar Skip It. Make sure that you go to abcwar.com, click the shows tab, Cedar Skip It, to check out more interviews, reviews, and news. Make sure that you check out more of our videos on the YouTube channel and like this video if you ended up having a good time with it. If not, hit like too. It'll bug me so much. Thank you so much as always for watching, and I will see you at the next review. See it, we're skipping. See it, we're skipping. See it, we're skipping.